Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ghanaians, my brothers and sisters. Allow me to begin by expressing my deepest gratitude to you for your tremendous support, which you expressed overwhelmingly and convincingly at the polls. There's no doubt that Ghanaians from every region of this great nation of ours voted for change. And we did so in both the presidential and parliamentary elections. I'm a staunch believer in the experiment of democracy, the system of governance that allows the ultimate decision-making power to rest in the hands of you, the good people of Ghana. We the people who, with an eye towards the future we would like for our dear country, elect representatives to go forward and realize that vision. Government serves at the choice, direction, and pleasure of the people of this great nation. And I have had the honor and privilege to serve my country in all levels of government. When in 2016, at the end of my first full term as president, I ran for re-election as an incumbent candidate, I respected the will of the people. I conceded, I stepped aside, and I set in motion a peaceful transfer of power because I understood that it was the will of the people. And if we are to progress as a nation, if we are to live up to the inheritance of our history, one for which people have paid the ultimate price, the sacred verdict of the people must be respected. It must be protected. It has been my pledge throughout my time of service as a representative to the good people of Ghana to do exactly that. And that is why I stand before you tonight and willing to accept the fictionalized results of a flawed election. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, it is important to remember that the government that is in power controls all of the state resources and oversees all of the state's institutions. The line he treads between his loyalty to the power that is held by the people and by his own desire to hold on to power can be a very thin one indeed. We went into the 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections with assurances from the Electoral Commission and the relevant state actors that it will be conducted in an atmosphere free from fear and that it will be fair, transparent and credible. Unfortunately, that has not been the case. What we witnessed across the country from Monday, 7th, December 2020, exposed a deliberate plan to manipulate and predetermine the results of the election in favor of the incumbent candidate, Nana Akufado, who, as so happens, controls all of the state resources and oversees the state's institutions. Despite all of the ruling party's inducements, use of monetary enticements, and other such schemes on a scale never before seen in the history of this country, the good people of this country understood what was at stake. And it was clear as the results of the votes that were legally cast that the National Democratic Congress won the presidential and parliamentary election. <laughs> No amount of trickery, slate of hand, or obfuscation will erase that reality. I'm extremely proud of our parliamentary candidates who have earned for themselves the title of giant elephant killers. We went into the parliamentary elections with a deficit of 63 seats. We made up for our 2016 losses and we're now set to become the majority in Parliament. 
This historic feat after only one term demonstrates the strength of our great party and the strength of the mandate given to us by the good people of Ghana to lead. In respect of the presidential elections, the facts and figures available to us from pink sheets and other evidence that has unfolded across the country indicate that numerous steps have been taken to manipulate the results of the election in favor of the incumbent. This calls into question the credibility of one of our most important institutional pillars of democracy, the Electoral Commission. It is now obvious to many objective minds that the Commission and its chairperson have been used to manipulate results from the various constituencies and in that process seek to subvert the sovereign will of the Ghanaian people. My brothers and sisters, one matter requires special mention. The use of the military in this election is unprecedented in our history. Armed forces featured heavily as an intimidating measure to reverse election results. And they continue to be used in the same intimidating role to insist on recounts in areas in which the incumbent has lost, while I'm twisting election officers during these supposed recounts. We will not accept anything short of a declaration of the legitimate results. <laughs> I said we will not accept anything short of a declaration of the legitimate results which point to an NDC parliamentary majority. My brothers and sisters, advisedly since the inception of the Fourth Republic, final election results have always been declared within a 72-hour period to allow for thorough and diligent coalition. coalition. Surprisingly, this Electoral Commission chairperson announced quite suspiciously, and for reasons known to her, a hurried 24-hour deadline, which, as we all know, could not and would not be met. The chairperson of the EC, in less than 24 hours after her declaration, has admitted that she made unacceptable errors, which go to the heart of the entire electoral process and cast deep doubt on the credibility of the announced outcome. The Electoral Commission of Ghana has never brought its credibility to this historic law at such a crucial moment of election results declaration. In fact, the litany of irregularities and blatant attempts at rigging for a candidate is obvious and most embarrassing. Ghana has come too far in our democracy, in our transparency, and in our well-earned international reputation for free and fair and non-violent elections, to find ourselves here, where we are in respect of this election. As has been announced by my party, the National Democratic Congress, we are unable to accept the outcome of the election as declared by the Electoral Commission Chairperson, Mrs. Jim Mensah. These results are flawed and discredited. When it comes to the parliamentary election, the NDC won a working majority of 140 seats. What, have, what has happened since the election has been a deliberate attempt targeting five constituencies of the 140 to steal and thus subvert the people's verdict. A closer look and detailed examination of the constituency specific facts cast very dark clouds on our democracy. And allow me to speak in specific so our claims are well known. In Seshuyo, so the results were declared without the content of one ballot box being counted. The parties had agreed that an issue of alleged overvoting should be referred to the coalition center to be resolved. That ballot box mysteriously disappeared en route to the coalition center. Nevertheless, results were declared in favor of the NPP candidate. In Upper Gentry West, the EC official deferred the declaration of the results because of alleged death threats. 
The results favor the NDC candidate, as has been confirmed earlier today. In Senate West, a ballot box was snatched and the culprit was apprehended. The seal of the NPP must have become dislodged in the ensuing scuffle with the culprit. That of the NDC and the Electoral Commission remained intact. However, NPP would not allow the contents of the ballot box to be counted and added to the lot because it would obviously favor the NDC. In Techiman South, the NDC won quite clearly, but for whatever unknown reasons, the military was invited. In the ensuing melee, two people were shot and killed by the military. Eight persons were injured and hospitalized. A third person who was one of those hospitalized from gunshot in the in injuries has now been pronounced dead. These are three, three Ghanaians who wanted nothing more than for their country to fulfill its promise of democracy and ended up losing their lives at the hands of the military that is meant to safeguard their rights as citizens. They include Abdallah Ayarik, 18 years of age only, and Tajuddin Al-Hassan, 39 years of age. The results have allegedly been strangely declared for the MPP, even though the EC chair claims to have left Techiman South out of her declaration. After an audit and review of our pink sheets, and I wish to announce that we have all our pink sheets signed. After an audit and review of our pink sheets for Techiman South, we can confirm to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the NDC won the parliamentary seat as follows. NDC secured 50,417 votes, and NPP secured 49,825 votes. In the Asian region, the results in the presidential elections, which were collated and signed by all the parties, were not the same ones that were transmitted from the Regional Electoral Commission offices to Accra. The padded figures have since been ex exposed. The Ashanti region provides fundamental problems that require further investigation and a full electoral forensic audit. Evidence gathered across board shows that the aggregates on the summary sheets of some constituencies do not reflect the individual results on the polling station pink sheets. You may also recall that prior to the election day, December 7th, there were many incidences where ballot papers printed in favor of candidate Nana Akufado were found at various locations. In Bantama, for instance, it was noticed that the portion of the pink sheets reserved for recording the number of persons biometrically verified had not been filled on a large number of the pink sheets. When our agent requested for the biometric machine to confirm the recorded results, they were denied access with the explanation that they were recorded in a book to which they were also denied access. My brothers and sisters, these are serious issues, ones that attack the very foundation of our democracy and our rights as citizens of this sovereign nation to elect our representatives and to have a say in who leads our government. It may interest you to know that since the inception of the Fourth Republic, agents of political parties represented in the coalition room go through an agreed, settled procedure by which a declaration of final results are made. This involves the production of constituency by constituency results, which are then scrutinized by the agents, and after their consent, the said results are announced. Unfortunately, this time round, under this electoral commissioner, Jean Mensah, a different system was adopted, one in which bulk regional results were provided without supportive pink sheet data by which agents could validate the accuracy of the results. Consequently, not a single pink sheet from the constituencies supporting the bulk regional coalition was provided. This is in direct violation of Regulation 3 and 44 of the Public Elections Regulation 2020 CI 127. 
Little wonder that the chairperson managed to obtain a cumulative figure of more than 100% of more than 100% in her declaration. On account of this, my party is confident that what has happened is a violation of the law. It is a violation of due process and therefore tantamount to an illegality. It is also a violation of an understanding we hold dear in this country. The understanding that this is not a dictatorship or a monarchy run by a single family for the benefit of a family. <laughs> Ghana belongs to the people of Ghana. All of the people of Ghana. We would like to urge you, the media, civil society, and all election observers, to be resolute and present a fair and accurate account of what has transpired over this period. We request of the international community to remain engaged in what is happening in Ghana and take careful note of the current threat that is being waged on our democracy, our freedom, and our way of life. To all the NDC members and those who voted for us, I appeal to you not to be intimidated or cowed to submit to a dishonest process in the face of overwhelming evidence that supports the justness of our cause. I extend my deepest condolences to the families of all who were killed simply because they were determined to protect their votes from those whose thirst for power outweighs their love for our country. And so let us all at this point rise and observe a minute's silence in their honor. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I know dark moments like these can make us question our resolve and confidence in the promise and potential of Ghana and our democracy and its institutions. But I choose to be a determined optimist based on my personal articles of faith formed by long service to my country including service in the high office of president. I urge you all to keep your confidence in Ghana and keep betting on the success of our democracy. This is a test of our ability within this democratic system to rise to the occasion and seek redress, to right all wrongs, to seek justice, to make every vote count, and to respect the sovereign will of the people. And let us not fail this test. Let history look back and be proud of how we united and stood up to fight for the people's fundamental rights to freely elect their leaders, devoid of crude political manipulation. And it is for this reason that my colleagues and I in the NDC will not accept what we know to be a fraudulent outcome of these elections. And we will take all legitimate steps to reverse this travesty of justice. Finally, let me assure our teeming supporters and the millions of Ghanaians who voted for change, the change which has been stolen in a real stolen verdict, that we're beefing up capacity in the constituencies where the ruling MPP is seeking to overturn our parliamentary victor victories already chalked. We're also deploying additional crack teams of lawyers and senior party officials to support these constituencies that are under siege. Also, in order not to leave any further infractions unaccounted for, the NDC will continue its meticulous audit of all the presidential pink sheets to ensure that the verdict of the people is upheld. These steps will surely lead to our next line of actions within the constraints of our democratic governance process, and all legitimate options are on the table. We want to send a caution to the EC that in line with Regulation 47, of CI 127, they should ensure that the election data is preserved for one year after elections. Let me assure you, my dear voter, that your vote will count. It is said that the voice of the people is the voice of God. 
And so let us go forth, knowing that God is on our side. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow countrymen, I thank you and do have a good night. And may God bless our homeland. Ghana.